according to popular belief. The craft recovered at Roswell, New Mexico was housed near Groom Lake, Nevada, in a top-secret facility, better known as Area 51. The government denied the existence of Area 51 until 2013. Hollywood has long showed an obsession with Area 51. Welcome to Earth. From aliens to UFOs, it helped fuel a perception that the government has been holding on to top secret information about this remote facility in the Nevada desert. Until now, it had only really existed in places like the X-Files on television, but newly released CIA documents officially acknowledge the site for the first time. Annie Jacobson spent several years researching Area 51, publishing her findings in a book. I mean, this has kind of become a national pastime and a, and a great debate, you know, about aliens. And the locus of this is Area 51. The facility become renowned with ufologists around the world for housing not only recovered spacecraft, but the bodies of extraterrestrial beings. For decades, this notion was just speculation until the summer of 1989 when one man would take the world media by storm well there's several uh actually nine uh flying saucers flying discs uh that are out there of extraterrestrial origin the live interview with the shadowy dentist drew international attention portions were broadcast by radio in six european countries and in a nationally televised tv special in japan actually nine uh flying saucers flying discs despite numerous inquiries and feelers dennis has remained anonymous until now his real name is robert lazar a young scientist with eclectic interests. The choice of Dennis was an inside joke. He says that's the name of his superior at Groom Lake. It wasn't a joke to Dennis. He called right after and he said, do you have any idea what we're going to do to you now? And I, I said, well, no. <laughs> he hung up the phone. Lazar's story is by any standards fantastic. He says he's telling it in order to protect himself. He says he was hired to work at an area called S-4, which is a few miles south of Groom Lake. At S-4, he says, are flying saucers, antimatter reactors, and other working examples of technology that is seemingly beyond human capabilities. Right, this, this came from somewhere else. I mean, as bizarre as that is to believe, but I mean, it's there, I saw it. I know what the current state of the art is and in, in physics, and it's, it can't be done. Bob Lazar took center stage as he revealed hidden secrets from deep within Area 51. He claims to have worked at the facility for several years, stationed at a nearby facility called S-4. Lazar made extraordinary claims that he had come in contact with extraterrestrial craft while helping to reverse engineer the recovered technology at the facility. The government were quick to suppress Lazar's claims even allegedly wiping all existence of him from public records, from birth records to previous places of employment and education. Ufologists around the world believe the government were doing all that they can in order to discredit Lazar. To this day, Bob Lazar is still feeling the backlash from the claims he made over 30 years ago. They came in and then they said, there'll be a few other people coming here. Just got a couple questions to ask you. In a short time, the street filled up with vehicles and the building completely filled with agents. It was really something else. Do they identify themselves initially as... Yeah, it was FBI identified themselves, then came in state police and a few other agencies. I don't remember who, but um, there were a lot. Talked a lot. Standing room only in, in the building. It was, it was crazy. Yeah. Why did the government take such an interest in Bob Lazar? Are extraterrestrial craft visiting our planet? Do the world's governments know this and are keeping the information from the public? Hacker Gary McKinnon believed this very notion. And in 2002 he set out to find the truth. In what would become known as the biggest military computer hack of all time.